Okay, so I want to preface this video by saying not only am I not sponsored by BT nor Ubiquiti, uh, they, they didn't send out any gear either. I paid definitely full price and my wallet definitely knows about it for both the internet connection and for the gear uh, shown in the video. I've made countless videos on BT's stuff in the past. I made a video when the package came out, when I got it and when I actually fully reviewed it. But something I haven't gone into much detail about especially regarding to BT, is should you replace your BT Smart Hub or included BT MFND with your own stuff? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Do I recommend it? So we're going to go into that today. Also, before anyone puts in the comments, and there will be comments regardless if I say this or not, I cannot get Virgin Media in Cornwall. It's not available. It's not that I can't afford it or that you know I already have a BT contract or something. It's that you cannot get Virgin Media in the vast majority of Cornwall, which is the county in which I live. So with the BT Smart Hub, I've had iffy Wi-Fi reception, iffy Wi-Fi speeds, and iffy speeds overall, and I believe this is down to how Google's, or sorry, BT system optimizes for, say, different applications or different clients and how it prioritizes them. I haven't gone into much detail because BT stuff is fairly limited. So from about three or four years ago I switched to using my own stuff and for the longest time I've been using this Linksys MFND so it's a, a router a switch and an access point all in one I'll put the model number on screen and it worked pretty well actually for the 80 200 and 300 megabit per second packages that we had it wasn't the fastest in the world but it kept up with those speeds absolutely no worries whether you're on wi-fi or on the gigabit ethernet connection and when I got this package, which is the 900 megabit per second package, I experienced some issues. So firstly, the 900 megabit per second input, like what was coming down into the actual system itself, didn't seem to reproduce itself within that router. So I wasn't able to actually get 900 megabit per second. It seemed to really struggle to the, the top end of sort of 800, 850. It also wasn't very reliable. So I do a lot of uploading and downloading because I store a lot of my video footage, archive it on Google Drive on their business account where you can have unlimited storage. And so I'm constantly downloading, you know, hundreds of gigabytes and uploading hundreds of gigabytes too because I tend to reference older videos in my current videos. So, you know, I have to re-download them. The issue with that then is, you know, when you're using something that's more designed for an 80 to 100 megabit per second internet connection, it's not going to work nearly as well. And another issue I ran into is that I wasn't getting good Wi-Fi speeds across sort of the house. Now, this wasn't technically due to the new package, but I wasn't getting what I really wanted. I know not to expect 900 megabit per second over Wi-Fi, and it's not something I need, but it would be nice to get, say, over two or 300 megabit per second. And this was just not happening because our house has fairly thick walls and the access point the single access point was in sort of the corner of the house it really wasn't optimally placed and it wasn't going to compete you know going through a, a, an entire sort of floor and extra walls and stuff like that so what did i decide to do well after a lot of looking i looked at some acer stuff some netgear stuff some linksys stuff and some ubiquity stuff i decided to eventually sort of stick with ubiquity so I spent an awful lot of money, something that maybe, you know, to a lot of people is going to put them off. I spent around £650 on networking equipment. Now, you might be saying, whoa, that's crazy, but it's a one-off payment and it essentially lasts for as long as you need it. So the, the package that I have here is, you know, I don't think I'm going to upgrade past one gigabit for at least the time being. So I only really need that gear. It's something that usually holds its value as well. It's generally decent stuff and we'll get into that a bit later. So I justified it to myself and I bought the, the gear. Now I will show you a diagram on the screen. A lot of people asked me in previous videos how you actually set up a third party uh, MFND route or whatever. And it's pretty simple. So you usually have for fiber to the property, fiber to the home, which is the package we're talking about today. You have an optical, a physical optical cable, a fiber cable coming into your house. It then goes into something called an optical network terminal, which terminates 
that optical connection and turns it into a fiber one because you're creating generally shorter runs so there's no need for fiber within the building in in a lot of cases so it converts it to that which then uses a standard ethernet cable goes into your what would normally be a bt smart hub and then from there you know maybe use your gigabit ethernet ports maybe use your wi-fi that is just generally the hub the starting point of the network and I know that's not what a hub is, but simplify it for people who don't know much about networking. That's why it's called a smart hub. So what you do when you replace your BT Smart Hub is you simply take the Smart Hub parts out and put in your own gear. You don't have to change the network terminal. It's generally advised you don't do that. And everything else stays in place. So it's really that simple. You don't have to sort of daisy chain them on. You don't have to run one in sort of router mode to switch to another. It's, it's very simple. You just replace the actual router itself. Funny story about this particular setup, me and my friend Alex from Flat4K, we actually went all the way up to Gloucestershire to buy a network rack cabinet because I saw it in uh, this guy called IMNC, it's my natural color, in one of his videos many years ago and I really wanted one but they don't actually make them or sell them in the UK anymore so I had to look on eBay and the only one that was on the in pretty much existence by the seeming sort of the looks of things was that this guy in Gloucestershire in a very posh part of Gloucestershire so we we took a car we drove all the way up there we got it in the back of the car just about we brought it back and it was such a fun road trip i think we've actually got a behind the scenes coming this was over a year ago i think now we've got a, a behind the scenes coming on that eventually but yeah it was a really good trip but basically what i needed that for is the U ubiquity dream machine pro which is a rack mounted router and what that enabled is kind of to allow me to fill it up with other things so i actually did have a couple of servers in there short like narrow what they're called shallow mount servers or something where it's really shallow because it's only a network cabinet it's not meant for servers from then i actually bought two access points i which is what you need for wi-fi because the dream machine pro doesn't come with any kind of wireless capabilities it is strictly for small businesses and larger homes it is a proper router with a switch built in and some extra functionality which we'll get onto a bit later but I had the Nano HD, which is a Wi-Fi AC access point. No Wi-Fi 6 or anything, because honestly, I just don't need it. I had one essentially where my old access point used to be, because that was pretty good for downstairs. And then with a cable going upstairs into another switch, I have the other access point upstairs, which acts as the upstairs access point. Oh, wow, that's a bit of a tongue twister. What the results? Well, essentially, more consistent speeds better reliability i wasn't getting any kind of overheating or crashing when downloading large files from google drive now the way i actually download from google drive this is probably good to add context is my friend harry built a bespoke piece of software where usually with google drive with large files it zips them all together and that can take forever and it's really awkward and clunky his solution actually just raw downloads the whole lot from google drive it's something that he wants to put into production eventually but right now he's just he's given it to me and a couple of my friends and it downloads heaps and heaps of stuff and it really puts the router under strain because there's no like zipping or anything process it's literally just downloading streams and streams and the dream machine pro has good cooling and a fan built in so it's pretty pretty much as stable as it gets i haven't had a single dropout apart from when funnily enough i had a power outage but even when that came back online everything seemed to set up within minutes so that was perfect and the whole setup itself has been way more consistent so i'm getting better speeds in here which is next door to the access point upstairs in the bathroom literally everywhere i'm getting better consistent speeds now this isn't particularly due to ubiquity stuff it's just due to having more access points the more access points you add generally you're going to get better coverage across the board which is something i recommend if you've got a bigger house or one like mine which isn't necessarily bigger but it just has thicker walls as an older house it makes it easier to actually get signal where you want it now something I do have to mention is also I have a network physical network switches upstairs and downstairs which allows me to get a wide connection to my MacBook Pro via a dock, uh, to my PC, to my Chromecast. I like to have a, a solid cable connection where possible and generally it just results in more consistent performance, not necessarily better performance. You know, my Chromecast doesn't need a gigabit connection, but 
you know, it's going to get a better stable connection so that when I'm watching a Netflix program or a Disney Plus program or something like that, the quality doesn't dip in and out, which is something that I find personally really annoying. When I've got a cable plugged into it, it stays consistent for hours at a time. So that's why I particularly like to use cables. I know in a lot of circumstances, you can't use cables. You know, maybe the missus is not happy or maybe you can't run a cable through the wall where you particularly want to because it's a rented place or it's a fire hazard. I know these things are um, issues for people and so using more wireless access points as opposed to sort of range extenders or anything like that, that's going to give you a better connection across the house. Now the question is, should you do it? Well, if you've got the money, obviously you have to spend money for these things. You're not going to get given it for free by BT. Then yeah, I do recommend you do it. Obviously the size and the sort of intensity of the solution depends on your needs. Do you just want better connectivity upstairs? Maybe just stick an access point up there. Or do you want wiring all over the house? Then you might want to invest in different switches. PoE stuff is really interesting. Essentially, you don't need to power it via an AC adapter. You can just use the Ethernet cable and it will run power to it. That's also very interesting. And you can have PoE switches dotted around the house or one central one with cables in the walls going to uh, different places. And also, you can even mount your own Ethernet cable sort of conduits in the walls and then have their own like ports on the outside which is awesome it's something that is very much going to depend on different circumstances however if you're a bt customer and you are looking to get better speeds and connectivity and generally better consistency whether that be in speeds or connectivity options i do recommend you sort your own stuff out you get your own access point you only have to input a simple username and password and it's set up you don't you know you go through pppoe and that's it like you're done like there is basically nothing else that you need to do you don't have to run anything in a daisy chain mode as i said before you're getting your own bespoke solution and you can build it how you want there are i believe isps out there that make you use their own solution which is really annoying and you have to piggyback off it but with BT, you don't, or at least with BT consumer stuff, you don't. You just have to use uh, a simple you know, username and password. Also something that I'll add ad anecdotally is I've never really had much luck with BT's own stuff, whether that be in my personal house or whether I've gone to friends' houses and they've had connectivity issues. The BT Smart Hub has never really been very good for me. So I just sort of stay away from BT's own mfnds and just use my own stuff it's also more configurable if you're really into you know networking or technology and you want to fiddle around with settings and and subnets and everything like that you've got that there and that's where i'm going to leave today's video guys there will be affiliate links to the ubiquity gear that i used or i bought in the video description they are amazon ones and they give me a small kickback if you click them um well you have to buy something through them but you know they're they're not sponsored by ubiquity or by bt or anything like that they're just affiliate links through amazon i have them in pretty much every video so yeah check those out if you want to see specifically the models that i bought i will also leave the uh, or i will in the edit put the actual model numbers on the screen as long uh, as well as b-roll sorry if i've been a bit higgledy piggledy in this video guys uh, if you're staying and watching this late it's actually because i haven't slept properly I've, my sleep schedule is a little bit off at the moment which is something i just got back on track and then we actually had to have builders around to sort the roof out and then that kind of mess with uh, mess with my sleep pattern so yeah sorry for the sort of rambling a little bit i have got notes here but there will be rambling in this video i say will be you've already watched it i, I honestly don't know at this point i'm gonna leave the video here guys please do like comment and subscribe if you're new around here to miss a video like this one check out all my social media links in the video description as always I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll catch you later. Peace.